Welcome to Tampa, Florida, home of the 2023 Ideal Elite Trades Championship Series. It is time for the hottest competition on the planet. This is the Service Titan HVAC National Championship. The Elite Trades Championship Series was created to celebrate the excellence of tradespeople and to help address the shortage of tradesmen and women throughout the country. That includes those in the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning industry. We got the best of the best here, right? We just want to do anything we can to bring awareness to the trade, celebrate these unsung heroes. I think it's amazing that they're hosting something like this to bring attention to the trades. And it's so exciting to give these hardworking men and women recognition that they really deserve. We started with hundreds of HVAC techs, but only the top 15 pros in the country were able to make it here in Tampa. Everything going as planned? Oh, no, absolutely not. The Ooh. pressure is on their shoulders, and someone is about to take the crown. Three of the nation's top techs going home with cash, but every competitor's getting the opportunity to show just a fragment of what they do every single day on the job site. It's what makes them the best in the country at what they do. Hi everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. I'm your host, Joel Godet. I'm joined by HVAC pro, Scott Karen. Great to be here, Joel. Thousands of HVAC techs attempted to qualify for this competition, but only an elite few from across the country have made it to the final stage. After battling through a grueling semi-final round, we're down to the top five pros who are about to gear up to claim the title of national champion, as well as walk away with $40,000. Let's meet our five finalists for the Professional HVAC Championship. From Charleston, South Carolina, Lee Morris. Back for his second year in a row, Lee is looking to walk away with the top prize after taking second last year. With 31 years of experience under his belt, does Lee have what it takes to get back up on the podium? From Mansfield, Missouri, Sean Price. Sean followed in his father's footsteps and after two decades of experience in the trade, He's back to compete for his second year, looking for redemption after a tough defeat last year. From Mesa, Arizona, Joe Ritorno. This father of three has been an HVAC technician for 17 years and now values being a teacher of the trade in a place where air conditioning is crucial. From right here in Tampa, Florida, Dagner Espinosa. He immigrated to the U.S. from Cuba when he was 17 and has made a career alongside his father, wife, and brother-in-law over the last 25 years. As someone who loves a challenge, will Dagner be able to come out on top of this one? And Craig Childress from Peabody, Massachusetts, bringing 21 years of experience in both the HVAC and plumbing fields. We'll see him later on in the national plumbing competition as the first ever crossover competitor in the Elite Trades Championship Series. But for now, Craig is ready to turn up the heat on this incredible field of techs. Let's take a look at what these guys are up against in the professional final breakdown, sponsored by Train and American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. The competitors will be working in these attic spaces, completing the copper line set of a horizontal installed furnace. They'll use continuous copper piping to bend and install the suction line and the liquid line to the furnace and AC condenser. Then they will install the condensate trap and drain, reinstall the air cleaner media filters to their correct slots, and finally install the furnace and air cleaner covers. Competitors will have only one hour to complete this monumental challenge. They will be judged on workmanship, proper tool usage, and safety. We're almost ready to go down on the floor, so we'll send it to the third member of our team, Chip Wade. He's got our Get In The Zone, AutoZone report. Thanks, guys. Yes, all the competitors just reached their stations. They've been reviewing their schematics, coming up with their strategies, and getting their entire workstation organized. They've got a lot of work to do in a short period of time for this final competition, and everything rides on their performance this round. Back to you. Chip, thank you. Scott, you look at the intensity on some of these competitors' faces. What's running through their mind here before we say go? They're in a zone, Joel. Right now, they're focusing on just what's on the cart, what they have to do. They're replaying it in their head. They're on it right now. All right, well, that time has finally come to get this competition started. Let's send it back down to Chip on the floor to kick things off. 
All right, pros, we've made you wait long enough. Top three winners take all in the final competition. Please find your tablets and let's let the games begin in three, two, one, let's go! Scott, we are officially underway. If you're in this competition, what do you tackle first? I want to see what I have on my cart for tools. I want to see what the layout is, and I want to see what I have to do. Once I pick a plan, I'm going to stick to it. You can see the big boxes. Inside is the AC condenser unit. That would be outside your home. Otherwise, this is a model attic that we're basically looking at. That's correct. A model attic or a loft. That's where your furnace and AC unit are located. They need to run a line set outside to the condenser. That's how the whole air conditioning system is going to work. Dagner Espinosa, he's competing on his home turf here in Tampa, Florida. Cuban immigrant, he's been in the trades for better than 20 years. And he's getting going on that crimping tool, just getting himself started here, working on the interior. Lee Morris Jr. back after his second place finish a year ago. And you can see him going to work measuring some copper wire. And this is going to be that pliable copper piping. Rolling out the copper line set, it's a flexible product. They got to make it straight so they can lay it out. What he's working on here, this is a furnace setup. You have a furnace which creates the warm air. The AC coil is what he's working on right now. So it's a combination furnace and air conditioning. How common is it to see it set up this way? Probably 80% of the homes in America have something like this. All right, much more action still to come. We are just underway at the Service Titan HVAC National Championship. The 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Service Titan, the all-in-one software platform for contractors in the trades. Ideal, the electrician's champion. And by Johnstone Supply, contractors' preferred source of equipment, tools, supplies, and training. Welcome back to Tampa, Florida, the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. Earlier today, Chip Wade caught up with Angie Snow about why Service Titan is so committed to the trades. We're here with Angie from Service Titan. Thanks so much for being here. Obviously, there's pros hard at work in the competition right now. What does it mean for you guys as Service Titan to be a part of this competition? Why are you all here? You know, our hearts go out with the trades. We do what we do because we want to show that the trades are a professional organization, just like any other profession. And this is a great way to showcase what these guys are doing and how amazing they are at it. Do you think that this competition makes a difference in the visibility and the shortage of the trades in the marketplace? You know, we're having a hard time finding people for the trades. There are so many career opportunities, but hopefully this will showcase the amazing talent, the grit, the determination that these guys have. I love it. We're excited. Awesome. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Chip. As we get a look at Dagner Espinosa, the 42 year old, first time we see this copper being bent. This is the soft drawn copper that I was speaking of, more common in a residential application. With the commercial application, it's usually hard drawn when you have to use fittings. This is a good example of how a power bender will help you out save time. And if you're at home saying you can't bend copper, it's the type of copper that allows you to move it. You're absolutely right. You can see Joe, he's really trying to get this measurement correct. He has to go up to the top ridge and bend over to the left. If he makes a mistake, he may not have enough copper to finish the project. How much copper piping do these competitors have? It looks like they have about 35 feet. So I think they have about one and a half times what they need. Doesn't give them a lot of options. You have to be precise here. These are very critical measurements for Dagner Espinosa. He has to make sure that he applies the correct measurement to that pipe. When he bends it, if he makes an error, he's going to have to redo it or put in a fitting, and that's going to cost him points. A ton of the work that these competitors have today deals with the copper piping. They're judged on at least four different areas. It looks to me they're all taking their time here. They're not used to using this power bender. It's a fairly new tool to the market, but it gives them great options. You see Joe Vertorno working on the settings for this power bender. Describe the uniqueness of this implement. That tool will bend all the different size line sets that we would use in a residential application. It's a great product, a little bit of a learning curve, but once you figure it out, it's a game changer. It makes things quicker, faster, and easier. Well, Joe Retorno is no stranger to the heat. He is from Mesa, Arizona, and he's been working in the trades for 17 years, valuing his work not just as a tradesman, but also as a teacher. 
I'm Nate certified, BPI certified, proctor for ACCA, I'm a proctor for Nate. I've always been about trying to grow and develop the whole trade so that, that we can elevate everybody. My name is Joe Retorno. I'm originally from Illinois, and I've been doing this for going on 17 years now. My wife had family in Arizona, and if I was gonna pick HVAC as, as my career, I figured that was a, a really great spot to go to. I have an amazing family that is very supportive. I have my beautiful wife, Lindsay. I've been married for 11 years, just celebrated our 11th anniversary. We've got three children, Annabelle, Nikolai, and Jasper. It takes a unique family to stay with somebody in the HVAC trades, in my opinion. I got really lucky and found an amazing woman to stick with me. I work at George Brazil Heat and Air Conditioning. I'm the technical trainer for the company. It's my responsibility every two weeks to take on the group from one to eight technicians at a time and get them up to speed to be able to run our maintenance the George Brazil way. Joe is one of the most kind and just open people that you would know. Not only is he very knowledgeable, but he can teach that well to people. We built a thousand square foot house inside of our training facility, so the technicians are getting a real as possible experience of going through, doing a maintenance, doing the steps in the right order every single time. When you follow a recipe, you get repeatable results. This is super exciting. I got to participate in it last year. They only took the top three, and uh, last year we were installing a 90% gas furnace, which we don't really do too much of in Arizona. But unfortunately, I didn't advance. I'm very proud that I've made it to the final five. I'm glad to have that kind of validated for myself. I would absolutely love to win, but uh, I know the competition's gonna be steep. The other competitors are the best of the best. Feel honored to be in their presence. Uh, my best advice, Phoenix would be a wonderful market for you to develop an HVAC career. Come on down to George Brazil, fill out an application, and we'll get you going. Two weeks, I'll have you out running calls. And it looks like as we get a look at Sean Price here, we might have an issue with some of those bends. Probably just use an error at this point. It looks like he might be kinking the line set. That's not good. It's mm. going to cost him in the end. All right, let's check in with Chip. Sean, how's it going, man? Not great. Not great. But it's going. Uh, tell, me what's, tell me what's happening. Well, the tubing bender uh, with a little tooth on it for seven eighths was a little looser than I would have liked it, and it just moved around as I was. Oh, it crimped it just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it just gave it a little crimp. Is that going to affect the flow? Possibly? Possibly. Um, I'm trying to debate whether to cut it out and couple it, or I don't have enough tubing to redo it, so. And it's just one little setting on one of the tools. It yeah. doesn't take much yeah. to, to, I to mean, go right. I mean, they just back and forth to different yeah. sizes, so it was just a little off like that. So many things can trip you up, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Chip, thanks. Scott, Sean said it may affect the flow. Will it? Absolutely. It needs to be addressed. What are the ways to fix this? There's three options. Leave it alone. Maybe the judges won't get it. Second option, cut it out. Rebend the pipe. I'm not sure if he has enough pipe. Third option, cut it out and use a compression fitting. First time we've seen this, Craig Childress is bending, I think, some already attached copper piping. One of the beauties of these power benders, you can just work them right in place. Nice feature. Lee Morris Jr., 31 years in the trade, and you see him using a very specific type of cutter. That's a tubing cutter, Joel. It needs to be done when you're working with HVAC lines. It leaves a nice, perfect round cut that needs to be reamed afterwards. That's different than a bandsaw, how? You would never use a bandsaw in any of the refrigeration world. It leaves shards of copper inside, which can muddy up a compressor later on down the line. It's a big problem. When you talk about reaming, that's just smoothing these edges out. When they ream the pipe, they go on the inside to deburr it to take any of the sharp edges off. It creates turbulence with the refrigerant as it goes through the line. Well, hopefully no turbulence for these competitors. We are heating up in the Sunshine State as the competition rolls on for the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. Welcome back to the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship here in Tampa, Florida, where the professional final is underway. Scott, being an HVAC pro yourself, why is it important to see competitions like these here? Well, Joel, across the trades and especially in the HVAC field, there is a huge need for these technicians. The people entering have so much opportunity, so having a competition like this means a lot to the industry.
Speaking of techs, entering the trade, every HVAC pro was once an apprentice, learning the ropes. And the skills of the nation's top 15 apprentices also were on display here in Tampa. So let's take a look at the apprentice competition from earlier today that's brought to you by Johnstone Supply. The apprentice semifinal round was a task dedicated to their workspace. The apprentices were expected to prepare the furnace units and gather the necessary materials from the Johnstone Supply Store. Now, most apprentices were able to complete the job, but others were left out on the floor. These apprentice techs gave it everything they had in the 45 minutes of allotted time. I thought I wasn't gonna sweat this year, but here I am. <laughs> the apprentice final was to move the furnace unit into the loft and place it according to the specifications provided, which is typically a two-person job. There you go. These techs, though, were expected to complete the task in one hour alone, many of the apprentices struggling, whether it was the result of holes being screwed in correctly or furnaces not being installed level. Each apprentice worked down to the buzzer to get their unit installed. Two, one, it's over! It was a hard-fought hour with only three competitors clocking out, but time is not the deciding factor of this competition. Taking home $25,000 and the title of national champion from Lipsick, Ohio, Patrick Bolt. Patrick, what a ride. Wow, how does it feel to be the champion? I still can't believe it. It's mind blowing. It's just like, you know, it's kind of life changing and I'm just glad I was able to do as well as I did. All five of our pros are hard at work to fit the suction line and the liquid line to the condenser unit, and they're currently up against a 60-minute clock. Scott, how long would this type of work typically take you? About an hour and a half to two hours. So their time window has roughly been cut in half, and that's the tricky part of this challenge. How do you balance workmanship against this time crunch? The pro who wins will be whomever is able to work fast, keep their composure, but still do a quality job. Joe Ritorno marking all of his copper piping with a marker. That is something the judges look for. Are you making the right measurements and are you tracking them on your tools? They are required to make marks. They are required to cut them a certain way and prep the pipe by reaming it and scouring it. Very important. Dagner Espinosa fastening the copper piping to what would essentially be the outside of the house here, running it into the air compressor. And he's got a little bit of an artistic bend. Got a little bit of an offset there, Joel. It looks nice. Going into that condenser, he has to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. He's doing a good job. I like to see it. Lee Morris now up mounting this copper tubing. Joel, you can see the span of that pipe that they have to work with here. This is a two-person job. Clearly, they're adjusting to their elements here. Lee Morris is mounting his copper piping. Craig Childress seems to be far out ahead of the pack. He is starting to connect that copper tubing to the air condenser. We see a lot of copper with HVAC. Why does this metal work particularly well with this medium? The corrosion resistance is excellent, but also you can work with it in the field. You can see he's using these compression style fittings here. It's a game changer for the industry. Prior to this, it was always done with brazing. Now with these compression fittings, you use a tool. It's just as strong, if not stronger, than the brazing in the past. Sean Price working at the other end, back at the AC coil. And now here's that cut from Lee Morris Jr. Lee Morris using a street 90 there instead of a conventional 90, fit right into the bell end of that fitting on the AC condenser. I like his style. When we come back, the professional final continues here in Tampa, Florida at the Service Titan HVAC National Championship. We're back here in Tampa at the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship, where a first place trophy and a check for $40,000 await the best professional HVAC tech in America. Our five pros have had a long road to get to this point, so let's take a look at how they got here, thanks to our friends at Monroe. From a field of over 10,000 entrants, only 15 technicians qualified for the semifinal competition here in Tampa. Our 15 techs were tasked with assembling a furnace, AC coil, and air cleaner unit, and then assembling and installing a supply duct. And they had to do all of that in 45 minutes. These pros had their work cut out for them. Some competitors flew through the semifinals, like Craig Childress, who finished in half his allotted time. Others, though, struggled working with things like the sheet metal. 
Every time I think of the word sheet metal, I start bleeding. The nation's top 15 HVAC techs gave it everything they had, but only five were able to move on to the final. Ultimately, workmanship was the deciding factor on who earned one of our final five slots. Let's give it up for Lee Morris Jr., Joe Ritorno, Sean Price, Dagner Espinosa, Craig Childress. Only time will tell who can take the heat and now rise to the top. Scott Craig Childress is now on to his liquid line. That's different than what we were watching earlier. A lot smaller, Joel. It's only three eighths instead of seven eighths, but he's still making a nice tight bend with that power bender. It looks nice. Lee Morris, we saw connecting his copper piping on the outside. He's now back in the attic. Looks real good, Joel. You know, everything comes off the AC coil real nice, goes up nice and straight. I like to see this guy's quality work. Really impressive. Workmanship is one of the big factors in the judging for this competition. Craig Childress looks like he's well out in front of his competition, his wife Rachel looking on. Although Lee Morris is onto that liquid line now too. Gotta hate soft copper. Lee Morris Jr. not a fan of soft copper. Why would that be? It's super when you're trying to be flexible, but when you're trying to make it look straight, it's really difficult to work with. It wants to go all over the place like a slinky. Sean Price gonna take that slinky and bend it on the ground for some stability. You know, I didn't see him make a full 90 degree bend there. I'm not sure what Sean's doing. That was a partial bend, but we'll see what happens. Although the same can be said for Espinosa here. Yeah, he looks like he aborted the mission here. He's gonna try something else. Craig Childress in the meantime, may be a plumber by trade, but his HVAC work has the other competitors sweating a bit, intensely focused on the task at hand and letting his work do the talking. This has been an unbelievable experience. I think that it's a wonderful accomplishment to be able to, to compete in two. And being the first person, it means the world to me. My name is Craig Childress. I'm from Peabody, Massachusetts. I've been in the trade for 21 years. My HVAC side of my career is more after I'm done with my nine to five. I've done my own system. I used to, prior to being at Boston University, be out in the field doing system installs almost every day. I started with plumbing, got my license in the plumbing field, and then the company I was working for at the time wanted me to go out and learn HVAC. Definitely the more trades you learn, the better off you are in the field. So I found out about it from last year's winner, Max Schwart. He was a good friend of mine. We worked together for many years. He came down one it last year, which was amazing, seeing him go through and come down here and crush it. So as soon as I heard about it, I wanted to be part of it. I don't think anything's really sunk into me yet. I put a lot of time into the trades, but to be able to give back to the trades and to show the future generations of tradesmen and women coming up is, is important. I have two wonderful kids at home. I have a 12-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son. My wife's down here with me, supporting me, but whether she's here or back home, she supports me with everything that we do, so I couldn't ask for a better wife or support her best friend. I mean, she's the entire world to me, so. I'm already so proud of him. I've always been so proud of him. He's incredible. I hope that he wins. I feel like he will, but I'm a little biased. <laughs> Success for this competition, just going out, giving my best. My expectations for this weekend are to show up and I want to just leave it all out there and whatever happens, happens. I'm hoping for, you know, a good outcome, but I'll be happy no matter what. This was an awesome experience. I couldn't be happier to be down here. Craig Childress, full-time employee of Boston University as a plumber, but he's flexing those HVAC muscles here as well. Multi-sport tradesman, he's kind of the Deion Sanders Scott of the trades. Absolutely, and with plumbing and HVAC, there's a lot of similar techniques. Bending, brazing, soldering, gluing, and there's a lot of similar products. Copper, PVC, metalwork. I love to see this. There's going to be a lot more of this in the future. As we continue here in our HVAC competition, Lee Morris getting things measured up as the pros continue working. Who will be the first to finish? Gonna take a short break, but stick around and we'll find out in Tampa next. 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship here in Tampa. $40,000 are on the line as we take a look at Craig Childress. You can see, Joel, how the liquid line is so much easier to install. Number one, it's a lot smaller. Number two, 
he's following along the suction line, which is already installed. Less guesswork, less measurement. He's on it quick. I love it. About halfway through the competition, let's check in with Chip Wade. Thanks, guys. We're right at the halfway mark. The guys are making great progress. Now, it's interesting to watch everyone's approach. Some of the guys are actually having a little bit of trouble with some of the copper bins. Sean had a little hiccup, a little bit of dent in the pipe. I'm sure that's going to come back to bite him here in the future. But Lee is doing really, really well. Uh, I think he's got a really strong chance. Of course, Craig is also crushing it. A fast worker. This is going to come down to the end, neck and neck. Back to you guys. Chip, thank you. Scott, you said early on this is a job that could take an hour and a half to two hours. Are you impressed with how quickly some of these competitors are getting this job done cleanly? Certainly am, Joe. It looks great. There's still a lot of work to be done. Let's hold on to our seats here. It's going to pick up the action. Working on that liquid line dryer right near the AC condenser, a required step in hooking up this condenser. What does the liquid line dryer do? The liquid line dryer removes any particulates or moisture inside the sealed system. You can see how Craig uses this tubing cutter. He's probably looking the other way, Joel, thinking of his next step. This is second nature to him, muscle memory at its best. Nice part about here, he's already got the suction line set in place. He's just mimicking that, Joel, making it go along the same path as the liquid line. Dagner Espinosa is getting some love from his supporters in the stands, his father, his wife, his kids. They're all here to cheer him on. Dagner is a Cuban-born Tampa local, and for him, work is a family affair. Let's take a look. Everywhere that you go, we can have a job on this way. It's kind of rewarding and enjoying the challenge of doing something different every day. So my name is Dagner Espinosa. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I've been in the trade for 25 years. Right now I'm working for Maintenex. It's a big company it's all over the United States. I came from Cuba 25 years ago. I was working like a delivery pizza. And my neighbor, he worked for the AC company. And he asked me, he wanted me to be the helper. And I said, OK, I'm fine with that. Coming from Cuba, I never see an AC conditioning before. So it was, it was fine. I liked the job and I've been here 24 years. My dad, when we came from Cuba, he started working on a construction company, but they had to travel too much, and my mom didn't like it. So I already was doing this business, and he was my helper for like 15 years. My wife, Nate, Giselle Gutierrez, uh, we've been together for 24 years. I mean, we, we were both working for the same company, so life is good, I mean, family, that's the main goal. So in the company, I'm a technician, she's a dispatcher. My brother-in-law, he's the manager of the company. So it's like, it's a big company, but we treat like family, like everybody's family there. I am very excited to watch Dagna compete. The whole family is gonna be there. So everybody from myself to his wife, son, my mom, dad, the whole family will be at the competition. And I got all my family waiting on this. I hope I make them proud. <laughs> Dagner Espinosa says he loves the challenge of doing something different every single day. Competing for $40,000, that is something different than your every day. How's he looked to you? He's looking really good right now. I love his confidence. He's bending that liquid line mid-air. I just love that application of that tool. And you cannot miss the Espinosa family cheering on Dagner in those neon shirts. Sean Price here at the AC condenser. Making his final connections here, Joel. I don't see where the liquid line dryer is. It looks like he might have forgot to put it in. This is the second year in a row because I think Max Schwartz was last year's winner, had an issue with the liquid line dryer. He did, Joe. That's a great memory. He actually reversed it, had to cut it out and put it in the other way. Cost him some time, but he still came back at the end with a win. So still some ground here for Sean Price to make up and get back in the hunt. He is chasing this man, however, Craig Childress, full-time plumber, does the HVAC stuff he says on the side. He is thriving in his first national competition. Making the final connections inside at the air handler. Looking Pros, good. Pros, 20 minutes left. And Dagner Espinosa looks like is in about the same spot. Looks to me, we Joel, he's just floor, buttoned guys. up his Let's final go. connections with the liquid line, then he's right there. And time could become a factor if multiple contestants finish and they have the same level of workmanship. The tiebreaker is time.
So we're coming on down to it here. Childress, Espinosa, Morris, Retorno, Price. Who will take home $40,000 in Tampa at the Service Titan HVAC National Championship? Welcome back to the Tampa Convention Center. We are in the closing moments of the professional final here at the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. The Service Titan HVAC National Championship is in its second year. But before we close out this competition, let's take a look at our winner's circle presented by Dunlop Protective Footwear. The 2022 Service Titan HVAC Apprentice Champion was Hunter Lee out of Breckenridge, Minnesota. Earlier today, Apprentice Patrick Bolt from Lipsick, Ohio, took home that title. Over in the Pro Division, Mac Schwert out of Marlboro, Massachusetts, was our inaugural champion. I feel very uh, lucky to be able to participate in it. It was a wild ride, you know. I can't believe it. It hasn't soaked in yet. Who will join Mac in the winner's circle after tonight's professional final? It is anybody's guess. Well, one of the final steps here involves that PVC pipe, that condensate trap and drain, and you saw the hacksaw for Craig Childress. Dagner Espinosa is on that step as well. Workmanship is the chief quality that the judges are looking for, but time will be a factor. Time is the ultimate tiebreaker if you do the same amount and the same quality of work as your competition at the end of the day. Checking in on Joe Retorno, he's still working on this line set. He has not moved on to the condensate yet. He is really far behind. It doesn't seem like he's in a rush. He's got a lot of work to do to catch up to the other competitors. Craig Childress on that PVC pipe now. You can see he's starting to assemble his condensate trap. And that condensate trap is for what, Scott? Joel, that removes all the condensation that the air conditioning coil removes from the house. It's all the humidity. That's why it feels cool and dry and comfortable in these modern homes today. Sean Price working at that AC condenser, and I still don't see the liquid line dryer. He might have forgotten it at this point because it should be installed as he's going along. Well, actually, it looks like he found the dryer. He's going to have to cut that in after the fact. Lee Morris. Got to drill the hole in the ground if the ground wants to be drilled into. Now he's got to make sure that pilot bit's in the right spot. He's got no pilot bit coming out of that hole saw. You can see he's fighting it. It's going to cause him some time issues. And now Sean Price is indeed installing that liquid line dryer. So Scott Karen, once he finishes this, he can go on to that condensate trap with the PVC. That's right, Joel. He's right there with him now. He's got a good shot at this. Looks like Craig Childress is almost done, though, with this condensate trap. Final pieces going into place. It's nice to see them get through this amount of work in such a short amount of time. I'm impressed. Just the eye test here to make sure everything's good. Craig Childress trying to make sure everything looks good. That is important for the judging. Are there PVC cutters on here? Hey, Chris, PVC no, cutters. No. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And at 49-19, Craig Childress is done. He is the first to finish. Now the question will be, did he do the work well enough, but he certainly did it in enough time. Real impressed with his performance. Happy to see him finish early. His work looks great. Dagner Espinosa getting close to finishing as well. Let's head down to Chip with Craig. Craig, oh, going with just on. 10 minutes left, hitting the hitting the clock. Yeah. What was your favorite part of the process? Because the work looks beautiful. Uh, I like doing bends, but I wish I had a little bit more time to do them, so it would make it a little bit nicer, but, you know, I think it's it's okay. I'm telling you, this bend coming back in looks really nice. You guys had already these units installed, so you right. all had to adapt and fit them in. Correct. A lot of craftsmanship there. Nice job. We'll see what happens. All right, sounds good. It's looking good so Thank far. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Something really key to that answer, I wish I had more time to make them look nicer, but he still made them look good and made them functional in a small amount of time. It really was nice to hear that. It shows a lot about his attention to detail and his desire for craftsmanship. At the end of the day, all this system does have to work. It's nice to see that he cares about how it looks. Dagner Espinosa looking at his on, finishing bro. touches. And we have two competitors who have completed the work. Nice. <laughs> Breathe a sigh of relief, man. Breathe a sigh of relief. 
You know, Joel, just a couple of minutes apart, this is going to come down to the quality of the work that they did. It could be a matter of just a few points away from a win. And hopefully Dagner doesn't come down to that time clock. <laughs> Sean Price has finally moved on from his line set. He's cutting into that PVC. And you can see the two canisters. One of them is glue. The purple one is primer. That's correct, Joel. Primer sets the pace for the glue, makes sure all the sheen is removed. Once you apply the glue, it chemically bonds the two pieces of pipe together. It's permanent, it's strong, and it's watertight. Boom. Lee Morris complete Woo. in 55-56. So our third competitor Four clocks out. Left. Four minutes left. Second place a year ago. We'll see if his workmanship vaults him to the top of the podium in 2023. It's just Sean Price and Joe Ritorno. And it looks like Joe Ritorno is also now done. In 57-28, four competitors have pieces. clocked out. Let's see if we can all beat the clock. Still two minutes left. Come on. Oh, no pressure here for Sean Price with everybody in the arena having their eyes trained on him. He's just eyeballing it here. I don't like this technique. I'd rather have him use a tape measure or a level. He's got to get it done, though, Joel. Part of it has to do with the time left on the clock. Will Sean Price get the job finished here? Price just needs to drill that hole. He has 52 seconds left to work. He's got to get that drill connected. And I think he's trying to get that bit to work for him. He's just got to get it started. It's not good. He's got to get that tip out of there. He needs a screwdriver first. Well, he's trying to stay cool under this 30-second clock. He's got his Allen key. He's going to extend that pilot bit so that it'll hit the wood first. That pilot bit sets the route for that hole saw to drill. Well, let's go down to Chip right, as he counts down. us down. Everybody, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, get it in there, one, yeah! Sean Price just gets in under the buzzer. Fantastic job, I'm sure he hasn't had that kind of pressure on him in a long time, doing an install of an HVAC system. Nice job, Sean. All five competitors finish and it takes all 60 minutes. One of our top five HVAC techs in the country is going home with bragging rights and a check for $40,000. That's for the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship returns. The 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Service Titan, the all-in-one software platform for contractors in the trades and by Train and American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Innovative and efficient HVAC solutions for the home. Welcome back to Tampa and the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. Tools are down, work is done. Five HVAC techs awaiting the judge's decision and Scott soon one will be crowned the national champion. Now, if you're an HVAC technician watching this, either a pro or an apprentice, and you wanna try your hand at qualifying, Good news, the Service Titan Elite Trades Championship Series is returning in 2024 in West Palm Beach, Florida. So if you're in the trades and you want to test out your skills, keep an eye out for updates on how to enter and compete with the best in the U.S. There are a lot of incredible HVAC techs out there. So to all those apprentices and professionals, sign up, qualify, and join us next year in West Palm Beach. Show us what you can do. It's been an action-packed day of competition for these finalists. Let's take a look at the 2023 Pro Finals recap brought to you by Ideal Industries. A combined 114 years of HVAC experience was on display here in Tampa in an effort to claim the $40,000 grand prize. 31 of those years of experience from Lee Morris out of Charleston, South Carolina. Lee took home second place last year, clearly was gunning for first this time around. Dagner Espinosa in his hometown of Tampa worked well throughout the competition. He was steady, but completed the task a bit unsure of his overall performance. It was clear that Joe Ritorno, the teacher from Mesa, knew what he was doing. Joe jumped on his work with intensity while keeping enough time in his back pocket to fix a couple minor errors at the end. 
Craig Childress attacked this competition head on. He was the first to clock out during the semifinals and the first to clock out in the finals as well. And Sean Price, the second generation HVAC tech from Mansfield, Missouri. Sean started off strong, but did come across a few obstacles along the way. He missed a step early on and was able to come back around to fix some mistakes and clock out at the buzzer. Anybody could come out victorious. The judges taking a closer look now, and they will have the final say. Well, Joel, someone's walking out of here with $40,000 and a national title, and it looks like it's time to find out. The judges' results are in. Let's send it down to Chip for the Yokohama Tire Pro Winner Announcement. It's time to announce the professional winner of the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. We're going to start with the third place finisher, $10,000 from Charleston, South Carolina, Lee Morris Jr. In second place, taking home $20,000. I must say, this was a roller coaster ride, and I'm so excited to announce from Tampa, Florida, Dogner Espinoza. How about that? How about that? Yeah. Through this entire competition, one man has risen to the top, and today he's gonna to get the honor of holding the trophy as well as $40,000. It's my honor to announce the winner of this year's competition, the pro that's taken it all home from Peabody, Massachusetts, Craig Childress. Your fastest tech is also your top tech. Craig Childress, your HVAC national champion. I love the way that he stayed with his plan from the beginning. His work was beautiful, well executed. Glad to see him up on the podium, Joe. Well, and he's got a chance to go two for two. He's also in the plumbing final. But before that, he's with Chip Wade. Craig, I'm so honored to be with you right now. You worked so hard, a hard fought battle for this competition. You came out on top. How does it feel to be the HVAC champion? It feels absolutely amazing. I mean, I, it's it's still sinking in a lot right now, so it's an honor to, to share the same area with them and, and work against them. Thankfully, I came out on top, but uh, I mean, really tough competition here. Well, there was so much respect flowing back and forth in all directions. Again, the whole point of this is to elevate everyone. Right. You have risen to the top. You're a great pinnacle on that mountain. Thanks for being that, and congratulations. Thank you so much. All right. Scott, what an incredible day of competition. Five of the nation's best HVAC techs here to compete, three of them going home with cash, every competitor having the opportunity to show just a tiny fragment of what they do every single day, and it's what makes them the best in the country. Congratulations to Craig Childress from Peabody, Massachusetts. He's heading home with the national title and a huge check for $40,000. Thank you all for joining us here in Tampa at the 2023 Service Titan HVAC National Championship. For Scott Karen and Chip Wade, the rest of our crew, my name is Joel Godet. Until next time, stay cool, America.